guys? Four sword worn pieces. If you get that online, it could be trouble. And we're up for it. Grand Prix Baltimore quarterfinals. Jackie Lee versus Adam Snook here on GG's Live. Players uh, drawing their opening hand. Both taking a pretty good look at them. Adam Snook is going to mulligan down to six. Definitely not the place you want to be against a really aggressive deck. Certainly not. Adam Snook actually really wants to get to four mana on turn four or turn five. So he can play his hero plate hold, play his angelic destiny. If he doesn't, if he finds himself stumbling on mana, it could be very easy for Jackie to pull away. Yeah, one of the one of the strengths what's her what's her hand like? Jackie look, there's there's a far, there's a forest and a bird and a and an elf and, and an a elf. sword of war and peace. Huge card in the matchup. Jackie's going to be able to get that sword online on turn three. And start ripping through Adam's life total. But Adam is on the play. He starts off with the planes and a champion of the parry. The best start he could hope for in his red green human deck, in his white blue human deck. Why do you think Lana War Elf as opposed to the bird? I think that. Jackie's planning on equipping it with the Sword of War and Peace very soon and wants to get that extra power. Oh, that's a pretty big play. Adam Stuck just played uh, Talia, Guardian of Thraven. That's going to force Jackie to wait another turn before she can cast her Sword of War and Peace. So. Jackie's going to. She has a bird. And she has a Green Sun Zenith in her hand. Green Sun Zenith, also a bit more difficult to cast because of Talia. Wouldn't be surprised if Jackie just plays the bird and sends the turn back to Adam. Adam's very much in the driver's seat at this point. Even, even coming off the the ship at the six, it's it's certainly a deck. His is certainly a deck that can live without one, one card. Definitely. Oh, no, Jackie can't do that. She tries to cast a sort of war piece momentarily, forgetting about the Talia. Uh, she's going to go back and play Birds of Paradise instead. Now, some folks will say, well, shouldn't she keep that mana tap? That she, that she tried to cast the sort of war and pieces. Anytime there's something that leads to an illegal action, the entirety of the action gets backed up. Adam Snook does not have a third land, but he does have a loyal Cathar. Further pumps up his champion of the parish to a 3 3, and this attack is going to leave Jackie on 13. Oh, and we're getting our first report from the other corner final matches. Matt Scott playing Blue Black Zombies is already up a game against Max Pieces Blue Black Control deck. That was fast. Yeah. Wasting no time. All right, Jackie's got to do some. Jackie's got a lot more math to do now. That is she gonna play the sword? No. She's tapping five mana for. Like she's going to play a green sun zenith for three. Maybe she's getting a daybreak ranger. Yeah, it is a daybreak ranger. You can actually see that written on the on the checklist card. So she's still going to suffer a little bit of damage here, but now she's going to start taking down, uh, especially the flyers. Center. Next turn, she's going to have to choose does she want to play with Sword of War and Peace and equip it immediately, or does she want to wait? 
well, isn't going to be much of a choice now because Adam is playing a Fiend Hunter to exile Daybreak Ranger, setting up a attack that will put Jackie down to five. So we see the we see how fast this uh, white blue humans deck can can get out there oh. and get into the red zone. Whenever they open on a champion of the parish, every creature in their deck is a human. Every time Adam makes a makes a play, he's gonna pump up his champion. Jackie doesn't really have much of a removal sweep. Uh, she no sweepers, no way to really punish Adam for putting a bunch of creatures on the board early. He's thinking, trying to see if there's any way she can get out of this. And she, and she has a sword and equip it and not attack. Doesn't look like that'll work. Well, she needs she needs four to cast the sword. There it is. Ships but turn. She just needs to jump off that champion of the parish. And another creature. Yeah, Adam stuck in a pretty good, pretty good position right here. Uh, all hinging on that, on that turn two three. Uh, yeah, Thalia. Yeah. Really made the difference. There were plate holes. Pumped champion up even further. And there really isn't anything that Jackie can do at this point. She's still playing it out. But. Well, mostly she's gonna. Hope to get some data off of Adam. Since she's probably seen his deck list already, I'm willing that she's looking more for the way he plays as opposed to what he's playing. And Jackie does indeed concede, moving on to game two. Let's take a look at their sideboards. So Jackie is going to be on the play. She's almost certainly going to bring in her Tree of Redemption. That Garrick Relentless looks pretty good as well. Gross of Gale is... Doesn't... He doesn't have doesn't too many fires. anything. Uh, the only creature that it will kill are Doom Traveler or Moorland Haunt tokens. Or anything equipped or with Angelic Destiny. Or enchanted with Angelic Destiny. However... By that time... That, yeah. And... Adam will get the Angelic Destiny back and play it again. Now the two players looking at each other's deck list, uh, in the top eight of big events, of Grand Prix and Pro Tours, people are generally handed the deck list of the other players in the top eight. They don't want some people to have unfair advantages because a friend of theirs played against this guy they're playing in the top eight. I, I actually think that's more about uh, the fact that we we're doing more extensive web coverage of events and, and want to mitigate the advantage of one player being online and another not. Sure. If you have a smartphone, you can look right. at the top eight deck list. So they just give everyone that information. Right. Obviously, uh, the mana barbs that we saw, um, Jackie. Tree of Redemption coming in. Player earlier is not going to come in. Um, the additional front is probably not anything. I think so. Garrick Relentless, however. He's going to kill guys. No, Jackie is leaving the Garrick in her board right now. Uh, Ancient Grudges, normally quite good against aggressive white decks because they're usually filled up with equipment spells. Doesn't do anything against Adam. The only artifact he has in his 75 is a single ratchet column in his sideboard. Which we're unlikely to see. I, he might bring it in, but it's not the kind of thing that Jackie needs to prepare for. Right. Uh, if, is the metamorph something that she might consider being one of the ones she takes out? Or she's still gonna is she gonna try to you know copy some of her bigger guys? She can copy her own guys. 
she can copy Fiend Hunter, invalidating that. Uh, exile the Fiend Hunter itself, getting her creature back. She can copy Acidic Slime, she has that. Hero of Blade Hold, should that come out? Definitely a lot of good targets. Or we can see her, see her copy the, the Strangle Root dice uh, as she did in the previous game, and then when it if it if it should die, come back and copy something else. Right. Uh, very tricky play that she made against PV. And Root uh, blocking up her top eight first here. Seems like Jackie wants to board out her two Hell Riders, that she needs to find other good cards to bring in for it. Right, by the time uh, Hell Riders is a lot better against the control matchups where she's gotten them down to life and they may even have some blockers. Just attacking the guys and Hell Rider can be enough. So Jackie is bringing in Run because it's a big creature. Tree of Redemption and another acidic slime to take out Moreland Haunt and Angelic Destiny and Honor of the Pure. <coughs> Players done sideboarding with a shuffle up for game two. Uh, reading out in the reading reading out in the Twitter scape. Uh, uh, obviously, you know that uh, this this match was selected by uh, the viewers uh, as their favorite, kind of an overwhelming favorite. Uh, if I saw Rashad's count accurately. Um, R&D's Aaron Forsyth also voted for the Lee versus uh, Snuck match. Uh, but he, he's also asking, you know, who's, who do you think is the favorite in the Freets Delver matchup? I think I'd want to be playing Delver. Uh, I think that, especially if Matt Costa is the person piloting the Delver deck extremely proficient with the deck. He has the potential to come out very fast with first turn Delver and back that up with a couple of mana leaks and just finish off the game. I think that a lot needs to go right for Meng to come out on top in that match. Uh, I'm also getting a report, uh, report from the floor. Apparently the Matt Scott just defeated Max Teeth 2 0. His uh, blue black zombie deck were too fast again, despite severed the bloodline on Gravecrawler, Gerald's Messenger, and Starcraft. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Despite his Gravecrawler getting bloodline, Starcraft gets it done. Scott wins 2 0. All right, players looking at their openers. Not the sauciest hand for Jackie. I'm not sure that she's made her emotion decision yet. Uh, she does have the, the green sun zenith, but it, am I am I wrong that she only has one land there? I think she has a second land in there. But There's Copperline Ridge right sure. there next to the Sword of War and Peace. I thought I saw. It. Land. The Catholic Wolf Run, yeah. She does keep. Probably planning to use Green Sun's in it to find an uh, Alpha Bird. Oh, she's, she's also Peel the Land. Yep, but doesn't have Green Green yet, which she needs to cast a lot of spells. Green Sun's in it for one. Let's see uh, which she chooses. Is she going to take the Elf that has power or the Bird that can give her? Green or red or blue. She still has metamorph in her deck. That's true. With the elf. The green sun scene, it just does so much in this deck. Well, it, it pretty much can get you what you want. It can get you the hunt master, it can get you the thrun. Gets you the acidic slime if you're in a tight jam. Gets you another strangle read guy. Which is the play I think she's, when we talked to her earlier, the play she said she made most often was, was the 
strangle was a strangle risk. It's hasty. It just it gets in there and battles for damage. Great card, two mana. No, great card, three mana. Right. right. And again, Adam Snook has the Talia, Guardian of the Thraven, but with Jackie on the play, not quite as scary. Still, probably going to slow her down a little bit. Now, it only... Oh, that's a from the last roll. That only affects non-creature spells, so Jackie right. can still play all her guys. And it looks like Adam Snook just draw uh, just drew a Angelic Destiny, which is going to be more difficult for him to cast than it would be normally because of his own talent. Might come back to haunt him. Especially when he has Mirren Crusader. 2-2, Two -two, double striking creature. Put an Angelic Destiny on that. Suddenly you're attacking for 12 points a turn. Cover. Jackie just threw a Galvanic Blast, which she can use to kill any of Adam's creatures right now. But Adam does get to five mana, does try to play that Angelic Destiny. Jackie might very well be able to break that up and leave Adam in a pretty bad position. She's got to remember, well, there's the guy, there's the Strangle Dice. Jackie just passes the turn to her playing the guy. Willing to be a little bit conservative. Well she's gonna have to she's gonna have to remember that Galvanic Glass costs an extra mana. Just and she might not wanna she might just wanna take care of that Mirren Crusader right now. Uh, it is pro green. She does indeed Galvanic Glass the Mirren Crusader. Again, opening up an opportunity for Adam Snook to resolve his angelic destiny when he finds a pit land. Dean Hunter exiles a Strangle Root guy. Jackie draws another land. She has a Dark Ascension flip card in her hand, probably a Huntmaster's spell, and a Sword of War and Peace. I'm curious to see if she plays the sword this turn, or if she goes with the Huntmaster. She is going to go with the Huntmaster. Well, it's going to give her, it's going to give her another body in play. And Either of the players go a full turn without casting a spell. It'll transform into a Ravager of the Fell. Take out one of Adam's humans along with it. Probably the Fiend Hunter at this point. Uh, it only does two damage. When oh, it only does two damage. So That's right. Won't be able to Fiend Hunter being one three. Fiend right. So. But then when it when it transforms. It can fight for for itself. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. That's the Daybreak Ranger. Yes. Uh, Adam just played a loyal Cathar, but he doesn't have any good attacks. I mean, and again, be leaving up a run and a hunt master. Uh, like you pointed out, he's he's hurt he's hurt himself and can't cast that Angelic Destiny, which is is that his last card there, right? Uh, I think he has two copies of Angelic Destiny in his hand right now. Jackie, I'm trying to figure out what she wants to do here. Is she gonna play the Sword of War and Peace and equip it immediately? Or is she gonna pass the turn, allow Huntmaster of the Fell to turn into a Ravager of the Fell? Oh, huh? huh? still thinking about it. Leaving up Galvanic Glass mana, uh, allowing her to. Oh, that's what she's going to do. No, no. Dismember is going to take out the Huntmaster of the Bells before it gets a chance to transform.
Jackie does have the galvanic glass in her hand. So if Adam tries to cast an angelic destiny here, she will be able to punish him for it. Oh, but no, he puts it on his fiend hunter. So she cannot kill the fiend hunter in galvanic glass. Sharp play by Adam right there. That attack is going to knock Jackie down to 16. Uh, and we're getting a report fl from the floor. Matt Costa was almost able to take game one with a Invisible Stalker equipped with Room Chanter Spike, but Elshnorn saved Eric Meng on the last possible turn. Jackie now casts her Sword of War and Peace, equipped it to a wolf, and attacked in for Four, and then hits Adam for another point of damage. And gains a couple or so. Now, had Jackie made that play a turn ago, she'd be in an even better position in this race. But she chose not to. Oh, second Angelic Destiny. Gives Adam an attack for. 11, putting Jackie down to 7. Jackie's going to need to draw something to get out of this. To another Thrun. Not going to do anything for her. Jackie does have a Sig Wolf run. Oh, moving the sword over to her Thrun. Oh wow, she's going to attack Adam, she's going to take six from the Thrun, another one from the Sword of Warranty, who's on four, you play Galvanic Clash, putting Adam down to two, and another Galvanic Clash to finish him off. Look at that, Jackie Lee comes from way behind. Able to deal exactly enough damage. Extremely well off. played. That, that's a, extremely well played. It, the only way the only way she wins that game is she slides the sword of war piece over, right? I thought that she needed to top deck something. No, she planned that map out exactly. Well, I don't think we saw the second cal. We didn't the, know. The we did of, not know that the, the Kibler esque uh, extra galvanic blast. Oh yeah, she however did. Yeah, she knew it all along. Yeah, well played by Jackie Lee right there. Players again looking at each other's deck lists. Uh, Jackie rereading Angelic Destiny, making sure she knows exactly how it works. Yeah, you gotta you got to figure. To, uh, if they want to do any additional sideboarding. Adam's, you know, Adam's got to figure two Angelic Destinies, he's in pretty good shape. Yeah. But again, his, his own failure slowed him down a turn there. It did. It did. That was exactly the turn that Jackie needed to beat him. Adam's going to, again, find himself on the play in game three. Adam trying to figure out if he wants to change anything now that he's on the play. Does he want to bring back in any of the mana leaks that he sideboarded out? Looking to get ahead quickly and stay ahead. Does he want to move around any of his creatures? Is he still happy with Talia? Jackie also taking a look at her sideboard. Yeah. Adam is indeed going to bring back in two mana leaks. Mana Leak, not the best card when you're on the draw in this matchup. So easy to fall behind, and the last thing that you want are conditional counter spells. But if you're on the play, Adam's going to have the ability to get out ahead and then keep his advantage by Mana Leaking key spells that Jackie plays.
liked it. In taking game one against Eric Mang, uh, in taking game one against Matt Costa, Eric Mang now finds himself one game away from securing an invitation to Pro Tour Abbott and Destroyer. That's right. You have to remember top four. Top four all get invitations. And the flight covered to the event. Uh, we still have our buy list. Let's see how many buys that uh, Adam Snook started this event with. Some discussion there. Stop the, the shuffling for a moment. Put their back to it. Adam Snook had three buys. Three buys. Started day one with a perfect 9 0 record. Going four and three, oh. going four and three today was good enough. Okay. Of the people who started day one with 9 0 records, or 9 0 or 8 0 1 records, uh, only two of them were able to advance to the top eight. We had Four players on 9-0, five players on 9-0, two players on 801. Of them, only Adam Snook and Paulo Vitor Damadoresa were able to keep that up and make it to the top eight. Again, even if you start off really strong, you have to keep winning. You have to keep winning. So we see two lands and a Lanawar Elf for Jackie. Uh, at least two lands for Adam, which is certainly got Talia once again. Uh, and looks like that is a sort of foreign piece in Jackie's hand. It is. So should it. So that Talia had the chance to really play a key role. Looks like Jackie only has one land though. And that land is a root bound frag. So it's going to come and play tapped. Oh no, she had another right. forest. She had a forest underneath okay. it. Okay. So it's actually a much easier keep than right. it had appeared. Adam leads off with Talia. This prevents Jackie from playing Sword of War and Peace on turn two. It does not prevent her from playing Strangler Geist or more mana creatures. I think, uh, I think a Geist and a mana dude seems like the play here. Well, she wants to be able to play sword and equip it as quickly as possible. Uh, and she knows that the guys won't be able to attack past Talia. Is Talia has first strike. She just plays another land of war elf and a birds of paradise. Uh, saw that Adam has at least one Fiend Hunter in his hand. He might have multiple copies of it. I'm curious if he's going to use that. No, he's just going to play Honor of the Pure for three mana, attack him for three. Not a good spot for Adam. Jackie's going to be able to play her sword this turn. She draws the land. She will be able to. She does not have the land. She does have an Acidic Slime and a Firexian Metamorph. So she can either take out one of Adam's lands or his Honor of the Pure and then take out another one in next turn. And with the Green Sun Zenith, she might be able to use that to find yet another Civic Slime. She's definitely only playing one main deck. She had another one near the sideboard. I saw her bring it in for game two. Okay. I'm not sure if it's still in there for game three. Okay, now Thalia really wrecking with... messing with Jackie's turn here. Jackie has a lot of good options. She can play the sword, which she knows that Adam has no answer for outside of leaning in Relic Warders. So she does play the sword. There's another honor of the pure, I think. 
Adam in a lot of trouble here. You can play a Fiend Hunter, take out one of Jackie's mana creatures, but that's not going to prevent her from equipping Sword and getting you to attack in next turn. He can play another Honor of the Pure, but that really isn't going to help him. Any value to her playing the Metamorph copying the Sword? If she's afraid of him finding Leaning Relic Order, then definitely she'd want to get that done as quickly as possible. But if she doesn't have another land, I think she's going to equip the sword and attack instead. Oh, we're getting another Fiend Hunter does indeed come down to exile a Bird's Paradise. And we're getting a report from the floor that Paulo, playing the Blue Black Control Mirror match against Dave Shields, tried to cast a Blue Sun Zenith for zero during his own upkeep uh, with an empty deck, but Shields used his Drown Yard to mill it before PB had a chance to draw it to take the first game. Countering it off. Countering it also does the job there. Yep. A lot of ways to win when your opponent has no cards left in your mm -hmm. library. Alright, so Jackie equips up a... Whoop, no, maybe not. Plays a Strangle Reef Geist. It has haste, so she can then equip that. And... Attacks for four. Adam cannot block. And then... How many cards does Adam have? Three. Ten? Three. So, this attack is going to put Adam down to 13. And Jackie's going to gain four life off of the Sword of Mercy. She has four cards in her hand. Puts her up to 18. Now, Adam's going to need to find a Leaning Relic Order fast. Or a... Looks like he just threw a Mirren Crusader. Might be able to race with that, particularly if he draws the Angelic Destiny. Of course, Jackie has that Phyrexian Metamorph in hand. Right. Mirror Crusader can, comes down, she can, she can copy it. Or she can copy the Fiend Hunter, Exile. Oh, good play. Yeah. The fact that Adam Sook played that Fiend Hunter might end up being a liability for him. Adam does play that Mirror Crusader. And ships the turn. Yeah. So will Jackie to run? Trying to figure out if she wants to play something pre-combat or get in an attack with her Strangle Roof Geist first, gain as much life as possible off of the sort of war and peace. Jackie's certainly doing some math. Wants to make sure that she has the race exactly planned out. Doesn't want to accidentally lose to anything. Almost attacks first, thinks about it again, and does decide to attack in. Attack will put Adam down to seven. And there's some importance to the fact that that also gains Jackie some life. It does. Puts her up to 18. So Adam has two cards in his hand. Jackie's going to play this run. It's trying to ensure that she can attack for lethal damage next turn. Is that going to give Adam an opportunity to kill her? 
I don't think he can. Even with an angelic destiny, that shouldn't be enough damage. No, the life gain that, that Jackie got off of the sword. But he would have to tap out to play Angelic Destiny, make his Mirror Crusader a 7-7. Seven, seven. And he oh. extends the hand! And Jackie Lee wins two games to one, advancing to the semifinal, locking up her invitation to Pro Tour Absin Sword in Barcelona. Tight match. That sort of worn piece certainly was the MVP card there. Oh, without a doubt. It's been a very difficult match for Jackie to win had she not drawn it. So let's go back. 